Hello, I'm Susan McDermott, the General Manager of the Sales Division for Long Island Homes. I'm here today to talk to you about soil conditions and the foundations when you build a new home. We speak to thousands of people each year who are very stressed about uh, what the site costs may be when building a new home. And I'm sure that many of you have heard in the media uh, about slabs cracking, um, heave they call it, um, waffle pod slabs, and this also puts a lot of stress on people when building a new home. What we're hoping to do is to help you understand the soil conditions in Australia and also the foundations when building your dream home. Today I have Brian Hooper with me. Brian has been within the building industry for over 40 years and also teaches a diploma of building and construction. Brian is here to help us understand soil classifications. Welcome Brian. Glad to be here Susan. Our aim is for you to help us to understand the uh, site classifications. Now we hear things like reactive soil. Okay the word reactive actually refers to the way the soil conditions uh, react when induced uh, through changing moisture content and changing activity from un unstable weather conditions. To be able to glean how uh, how it will react, a structural engineer has to actually test the soil in the area because it does vary from area to area. So the engineers go to the site; they actually uh, do diggings on the site, and uh, from that, from those drillings, are actually able to maintain samples of the soil and the type of moisture content that's involved in that. Now, from those testings, which they do to AS2870, which relates to the design of the slab and foundations. From there they are able to design a foundation that will suit your, your particular house style based on the soil conditions that are underneath it. Now from those tests that the engineers do, they'll then base their design of, of the foundations upon the test and the soil content and the moisture content to react to allow for the movement upon that. Now how that's done and how that's done well will determine how well your house will be in the future. If these tests are not done correctly, you can then actually have a rise to a whole heap of potential problems. You can have uh, sinkage in corners. Uh, you can have cracks appearing. Uh, you can actually have, then have heaving, which you hear a lot about in the newspapers, mm -hmm. is where the slab actually buckles under the pressure of the soil movement underneath. This is pretty serious stuff, Brian, isn't it? It is very serious stuff, and the, the things that we hear about in the media are all actual happenings. Yes. Is it only reactive soil that um, creates these challenges when building a home, Brian? No, you actually have to address it right across the line. Um, silty soils, uh, clay, obviously clay contents we've already discussed, even gravelly soils, or a mixture of all these, can all have the potential for movement if not designed and addressed correctly. There's a lot of site classifications. Would you be able to take our viewers through those classifications, Brian? Certainly, Susan, we will do that. Let's look at the classifications as per the Australian Standards 2870. In class M or MD, which is a 20 to 40 millimetres of movement, these are classified as moderate reactive clay or silt sites. They may experience moderate ground movement as a result of soil conditions and moisture changes. In class H1 and H1D, there are 40 to 60 millimetres of movement. These are highly reactive clay sites and can experience a high amount of ground movement as a result of soil conditions and moisture changes. In class H2 and H2D, where there is 60 to 75 millimetres of movement, these are highly reactive clay sites and may experience very high ground movement as a result of soil conditions and moisture changes. Now what is approximately 70% of all building sites in Australia is the Class P, which are classified as problem sites. This is where the ability of the soil to evenly bear a load is very poor. Now ground movement here as a result of moisture changes may be very severe and these sites are typically subject to abnormal moisture conditions resulting from things like trees, dams and poor site drainage. If you are building on a Class P site, you really should need to consult a structural engineer on the design. I hope we have managed to shed some light on the subject of soil and site classifications 
and that you join us on Friday 26th of September for part two. Craig Delaney, the Managing Director of Long Island Homes, will be penetrating further into Earth's challenges of building your home. Thank you very much and thank you for joining us.